Hi and welcome back to a new video. In the previous video we were investigating the RTX 1590 matrix by ASUS. We stopped at a point of the liquid metal application that I wasn't so happy about, but I didn't have the time to reapply the liquid metal and also investigate how exactly this was applied. So that's something I want to do in today's video. And I also want to deep dive a little bit closer or deeper into the BTF connector. Because I was thinking the BTF connector and I think the 12 volt high power connector the input 12 volt should be the same power plane, which means that in theory there should be a way to like mod the card, maybe like bridge one of these pins, so that the card would think that the BTF connector is connected, but it actually isn't, and 800 watts would be pulled through the 12 volt high power connector. That should be doable. And if you're thinking why, not everybody might want to use a BTF motherboard or has a BTF motherboard, or if you want to use the card vertically, then this might be a modding option and it's, you know, just out of technical curiosity something I want to do. You need server or storage. If you don't act now, you're leaving money on the table during Hetzner's Black Week. Hetzner is one of Germany's largest internet service providers with GDPR compliant data centers in Germany and Finland plus locations in the US and Singapore. Until December 1st, get selected dedicated servers with no setup fee and one month of any storage share free when you book it by December 1st. For example, grab the EX44 with Intel Core i5-13500 for only 46 euros 41 per month or go for the high-end AX102 and AX162, perfect for gaming production or next level projects. Upgrade now and save up to 94 euros only while stock lasts. You can find all the information in the link in the description below. First we want to investigate the cooler further, like liquid metal, heat pipes and everything. But I also want to highlight that I know that ASUS is looking into my critique about the liquid metal application and their thinking or just checking if they can still improve something regarding the liquid metal application. So it's possible that something will change. I'm not quite sure about that yet, but if there are any news, I will definitely let you know. We will also investigate the PCB further. I also read comments online that people wanted to see the PCB in full size. So I took a picture that you're just looking at right now. And if you need any information about this, you can just pause and get a screenshot out of this video. I also read a couple of comments about the compatibility when it comes to water blocks with Matrix PCB to Astral, and there are more changes than you might think. So it's not only that area that changed, for example, this IC was moved from here to here, but also there's like an extra mounting hole here. Things were reorganized in that area. There's extra circuitry here and here. And especially this entire row of like inductors and power stages got moved upwards. On the Astral, there is much more space on top here. And this was moved all the way up here. So there's a lot of changes, just small ones, but a lot of changes from Astral to this one. It's not simply an Astral PCB that was rebranded and like the connector added. There's more that was changed. But now quick look at the cooler and I think it's quite impressive what kind of or how much material they just simply threw at the card to cool it. So first of all we have this huge vapor chamber that is also nickel plated so that's great. And here we have the infamous yeah, and liquid metal application I was talking about last time. You can see all those tiny dots that look like I don't know almost like printed the liquid metal on top which is quite odd. Not sure, I've, I've never seen this before. And then what I criticized with the circle of just simply thermal paste that was applied around it. And then we have all those contact patches for memory, for small like ICs, and then power stages and also inductors everywhere. And then this huge vapor chamber has contact, if I counted correctly, to 11 heat pipes, which is just an enormous amount. And these heat pipes then transfer the heat to all those fins the cooler is made of. And the cooler is not one huge piece, so it's basically two parts. If I move this a little bit, you can see that there's this inner part of the block of the cooler. And this one is cooling the memory, the chip and also the power stages. And the inductors are on a separate one. The inductors are thermally decoupled just through the big aluminum frame. I now want to investigate the weird liquid metal pattern further underneath a microscope. So that would be this area and then you can see plenty of liquid metal that was squeezed out to the side. 
also on top here, which is not really an issue. And I also read comments about that it's hitting the SMDs and thus might short, some, short something, but that should not be the case. It was maybe not that easy to see, but ASUS definitely did their work and they added some kind of glue or something, some protective material on top of the SMD. So they are all covered and should not be hit by the liquid metal from what I can see. And there you can see exactly what I was talking about. So you can see the NVIDIA logo on the chip and in between you can see all those yeah, circles. It almost looks like bubbles and a lot of holes in between. So first look, you might think, oh, there's a lot of air and that's not a great application, but you have to keep in mind we're just investigating the disassembled state. That doesn't necessarily mean that in the assembled state it was exactly like that. In the assembled state you would have the cooler sitting on top and that might then spread the liquid metal further or not. I just I just don't know. That's something I just can't tell at the moment. But it's it's a very interesting application I haven't seen before in this state. You can see it's with some bigger holes as well, but again, that could be after disassembly that it looked like that. And then during assembly it was fine. But it's something I just don't know, but this pattern is something I have not seen before in combination with a liquid metal application. One thing I absolutely have to investigate is this corner, so it's the top left corner. It's something I already noticed during the previous video that it looked a bit odd, but I wasn't sure if it's just because of the liquid metal that was squeezed over it and just sits on top, or if a part of this glue that you can see here that is covering the rest of the capacitors is maybe missing or like partially peeled off. I have to clean it first and then we can investigate it. What we can also see that it's a classic gallium, indium and tin alloy, so just a classic base type of liquid metal. Don't pay attention to the exact values, they are not correct, so that technically wouldn't make sense, but we know that at least tin is present and it's just the basic, very classic liquid metal. That means we now will have to clean the card and that will allow us to investigate this further. Now cleaned, it all looks absolutely perfect. You can see all the SMDs were properly protected. Nothing went under the protection. So at no time the GPU was at risk for being damaged. So that, that is all great. Now I also just have to clean the other side. After cleaning, everything looks pretty normal. Nothing unexpected. Just notice that there is number 157. Not sure if that's the card number, but so far everything looks all right. With the classic method of applying, you just need a very tiny amount of liquid metal and then you shouldn't need the barrier around it, even though it would be great to have. I would love to just apply our GPU guard, which I can't because of the like glue that is on top of the SMDs and that would make the GPU guard sit simply too high. And also on the opposite side, I applied a very thin layer of liquid metal. That's enough. Everything else which just squeeze out to the side is not necessary. The PCB is already back on the cooler, also the spring mechanism, just have to reassemble everything. Card is fully assembled, it's actually quite easy to do considering that it's a super complex card. Now we will add the BTF connector back, plug it into the system and then we should be able to do temperature comparison. 45 minutes, test under load and nothing really changed. We still see about 3030 megahertz on the GPU. We see about 68 degrees Celsius on the GPU temperature and we see maybe 10 to 20 RPM lower fan speed but I would say that is within tolerance, so nothing really changed, which is great. One more thing I want to try is overclocking, because Volek, a member of the Thermal Greasy Discord server, feel free to join, the link is in the description down below, he let me know that I did not extend the overclocking range in GPU tweak, and thus I did not use the full potential that is there for overclocking. So that's something I just want to retry, and then also increase the fan speed, which will allow us to get better cooling, and this, yeah, I don't know where we will end up without any hard modifications, should be interesting. And the setting I ended up using is just increased GPU voltage to 100%, GPU clock to 189 plus, the memory clock to 50,000, and I also added the fan speed a little bit higher with 70% on side and center and 48% on the rear, so that's about 2,100 RPM which is still okay noise level wise and also 100% did not help me to push it further. And now we're rerunning 3D Mark Speedway and I'm so curious because this is also so much higher than everything I used before with my Astro. And with this I can get to 169.1 FPS. 
And the crazy part about this, this is even enough for the 3D Mark Hall of Fame with rank 57. And with this, we are about 7% higher in performance compared to an RTX Pro 6000 in the 3D Mark Speedway, which is very impressive performance. And, and especially if you think of that, we don't have to do any kind of hardware modifications. It's just by the matrix and you get this kind of performance to end up in like almost top 50 in the Hall of Fame at a 3D Mark Speedway. And that's also positions where you're already fighting with liquid nitrogen overclocking results, for example, with a 5090 Astral. And it's just simply by having the 800 watt BIOS and a very, very nice card. This should be interesting because I'm now trying to mod the 5090 matrix to be usable with 800 watts through the 12 volt high power connector without doing a shunt mod or any modification on the card itself because I'm trying to use the BTF adapter to tune this into like a modding bridge. I'm not sure how to call it, but the goal would be that you can use the matrix, for example, on a riser cable that could be vertical or horizontal and also being used on a non-ASUS, non-BTF motherboard. We will use this test stand that I built and we're going to hook it up through a riser cable because I want to access the BTF connector while the card is running. That's also why I removed the backplate. So my theory is the card can be used just through the BTF connector without 12 volt high power connector. That also kind of implies that all the functions of the 12 volt high power connector have to be present down there. I mean, that's kind of obvious. We have 12 volt and ground through the big fingers, and then we have a portion of small connectors. And I think that they're both kind of the same, which means that we should be able to kind of fool the graphics card. One thing you might immediately notice is that one of the pins is shorter than the rest. That's quite common practice with PCIe devices. You will always find one of these gold fingers being shorter than the others. And that's the present pin. That's also the reason why it's shorter because if the card is only partially plugged, this would be the last pin that makes contact between the card and the motherboard. And this would signalize both, de both devices that something is plugged. And now, I'm not sure, but it might already work just to bridge this pin to ground and fool the card that BTF connector is basically plugged. Now the first thing I have to figure out is which of these pins is ground. So just simple checking with the resistance from a known resistance point on the card that is ground to just checking all the individual pins and then tracking which is ground. So I also have to double check the pins that are on the bottom side. On the front side, I didn't f find a ground one, but now the third pin on the bottom, that is definitely ground. That means I will connect the short one here with the third one from the right, that one. And as I said in the previous video, I have to return the card, but we're not modding the card, we're modding the adapter and I spoke with Asus and they can just get new ones of these. And that's how it looks like, simply added a small cable from one side to the other. But when first launching without the connector being plugged, you can see the card is being detected and I want to see how it looks like one, uh, if the BTF connector is not plugged and then that we can immediately figure out if we add our adapter, if it works or not. One thing I immediately noticed is that in GPU tweak, you can only see the card at the 12 volt high power sense, while previously when the card was plugged, it was also showing motherboard next to it. And the result should be in 3D Mark Speedway that the card is not pulling more than 600 watts. And exactly that is also the case. Board power draw is 600 watts, while previously we saw about 700 watts. So we will simply plug our connector where 12 volt and ground is simply not connected. And I guess we will just see what happens. And at least it didn't explode yet, which is great. And we immediately also have display signal, which is great. Well, we have motherboard back. We also get some alarm signal because it's pulling zero amps. So yeah, it seems like it's a bit confused, but so far it's working. Okay, but it's still just pulling 600 watts under full load. It kind of makes sense because in the preparation to this video, I already checked some resistances from 12 volt high power to the BDF connector. And I noticed that two of those pins are definitely connected, but with some resistance in between which also makes sense. I guess there is some circuitry built in that allows for both individually to be detected if those sense pins are bridged to ground. That's also how the 12 volt high power connector works. So it has two pins that are relevant that have to be bridged to ground in order to, to allow the card to run 600 watts. And it would make sense that this also exists on the BTF connector alone and they have to work individually. And that's why probably some circuitry is in between. That's also why there is probably some resistance that is being measured. But I will have to track which of, of those pins 
are those sense pins and then also bridge them to ground in addition. If you take a closer look at one of those 12 volt high power cables, you can see that only two of those sense pins are actually used. And if I would plug a cable, I would short this one and this one to ground. And if I now check the resistance between this sense pin and this pin, I'm getting a resistance of about 14 kilo ohms. Same goes for the second one from the left and the other sense pin right here. So there's definitely some circuitry in between, but I can see that they are, they are somewhat directly connected. And this absolutely makes sense if you think about that if you would plug a 12 volt high power cable without the two sense pins shorted to ground, it would not allow the car to draw any power. So that's basically the situation that we were observing with the BTF connector, that it showed some kind of presence with the current adapter that we built, but it did not allow any power being pulled because the two sense pins were not connected to ground. And that's what I'm trying to do now. I'm adding a second wire. I added a bridge for the first two, just connected them because we already have ground here. And I'm adding the second wire to the second pin of the right. And this is how the final adapter looks like. So from the back, we are getting ground to the present pin on the left. Then the second pin from the left should be one of the sense pins. And then the second pin from the right is the other sense pin. So we're connecting it again. Seems to boot, definitely booting. GPU tweak is still complaining because there's no current from the motherboard side. Awesome, it is actually working. We can see power draw is about 700 watts. TDP is showing 85 to 90%. Yeah, we definitely fooled the card. Just adding an overclock to increase it even further. See 750 watts being drawn. And we're getting this confirmed also in GPU tweak while there's nothing being pulled over the motherboard side. If we switch to cart, we can see a quite even but very high power draw of over 10 amps per pin on the 12 volt high power connector. In conclusion, our DIY adapter works as intended which is also great because we didn't modify the card itself. So we could just unplug this and just use the card without any kind of modification. It would not be detectable. But you can also see once we zoom in on the 12 volt high power connector, because this is running far out of spec, the LED there is complaining, but it is working. But I can also feel it. If I touch the cable, this is, this is quite warm. Obviously this is a modification I would not recommend to run as a daily because it's just running the cable so far out of spec. But it also shows you what is possible with the technology once you understand it. And typically this kind of video is also meant to also educate you to understand further how things like the sense pins for example work and how you can play with it and run some tricks to for example fool the card to run the full power over the 12 volt high power connector even though this is absolutely not recommended. In the, in the end, I had a ton of fun playing with this card. I will now have to send this out to another German YouTuber who is next in line to review the sample. I hope he will have fun with this and I hope you also had fun with this video. See you next time. Bye bye.